Hey, hey, Warrior Saints, thank you for being with us. To learn more on this topic and many, many others, visit us at warriorsaints.org and subscribe to The Way of the Warrior Saint Weekly. Till then, keep walking on the way of the Warrior Saint. Hey, Warrior Saints, welcome to St. George, where we will unleash great by living a crucifixional life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. No cute stories to start this morning. We're going to have a difficult conversation. Um, we're, gonna, we're really going to confront a, a challenging issue that's facing all of us. And as an opener for that, we heard in this beautiful epistle, which Yasmin read for us this morning, that St. Paul is talking to the Roman Christians, the epistle to the Romans, and he's talking about his people, the Jewish people. And he says, being ignorant of the, the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. And he's talking about his people, the Jewish people. He loved them. They were his people. Paul was a Jew. And he wanted them to come to the gospel of Christ. But he didn't want them to do it their way. They were looking to establish righteousness to find, ultimately, to find holiness their own way. And you hear him, he says it. They, they were ignorant of God's righteousness. And they sought to establish their own righteousness. My way is the right way. That's what they were saying. And that was the argument that St. Paul was having with the Jews versus the Gentiles. And he said, they therefore, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. Now, much like that, that story, in our own uh, modern day and current environment, there are a lot of topics out there, and there's a lot of confusion. And so we're going to confront one of them this morning head on and talk about homosexuality. Now, I know it's a very difficult topic. I know it's tough, but we're going to give it a shot together and by your prayers and through God's mercy. Hopefully at the end, we will understand what it means to submit to God's will. And you know it. You all know it like I know it. Whether you watch the news or you look in your social media feeds or just in conversations in the world, homosexuality is a very difficult topic. Everybody's fighting with everybody about it. And there are those who say, uh, anyone who is pro-homosexuality says that it is okay, it is how God made people and that we should accept all of it. And those who are anti-homosexuality talk about how it is a sin and how it is an aberration and God didn't create it like this. And names are being hurled back and forth and back and forth. And in this conversation, there resides some confusion, even to the point where people in our churches, Orthodox Christians, Orthodox Christians who are so lost sometimes in the full understanding of what God says about homosexuality that they submit to the teachings of the world. Now look, it's a tough day. We're in a tough situation. It's a, it's a with the, the globalization that we are confronting today, the globalization, you know, meaning this one world planet with, with humanity, it seems to me, as I've been studying this more and more, that people no longer identify with their families, they no longer identify with their faith, but identity now as a member of this larger human global planet, we tend to see identification with our age group. Like I identify with people who are my age, or I identify with people who are in my job or in my school environment, or we identify with people who are like us politically. And there's no longer any identification with, the, or less, let's say at least this, less and less identification with our faith and less and less identification with our family. And we're getting, and we're in an environment where the external forces in the world are saying, this is right, this is how it should be, and this is how it should be. And as Orthodox Christians, and believe me, many in the Orthodox world, perhaps even in our own community, are struggling and confused by, what does God really say? What does God have to actually say about homosexuality? And once we know that, how do I respond? How do I act? How do I behave as an Orthodox Christian, as a warrior saint? How do I deal with that once I know what God has said? And so today we want to discuss exactly what God has said to us about homosexuality. And then we're going to explore how do we as Orthodox Christians handle it? How do we work with people? How do we deal with that challenge that's before us? You know, in the very beginning, from the very first page of the Bible, 
God creates man and woman. We know the story of Adam and Eve. And he's very clear. He says to them, be fruitful and multiply. And this is a very clear directive for us. God, from the beginning, created human beings to be male and female. Two, if you will, two parts, two halves of a greater whole. And the message is for progeny, right? To have children. God says, be fruitful and multiply. I mean, it's in the very essence and core of humanity to pass on our seed. I mean, that's just how it works. And so God has said from the beginning that I want you, human beings, to pass on human beings and to do so through procreation. Contrasted to that, homosexuality struggles with the inability to pass on their seed. I mean, we all know that. Two men cannot have a child. Two women cannot have a child. I understand that with the marvels of modern science, whether it be IVF or surrogacy, that they can have children. But in and of itself, homosexuality cannot contribute to the human race. Do you understand? It cannot have progeny. Now further, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, and I'm going to read the quote for us, the Apostle Paul has a very, very clear list of things that are, that are prohibiting the, the group of the Corinthians from inheriting the kingdom of God. He says, do not be deceived. Listen to this text. It's, it's, it's beautiful and it's tough. But he says the following. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. And that's St. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians chapter 6. He gives this list of all of these things that are indeed sinful according to the teaching of God. And says that if they persist in this, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so, beloved in Christ, I want it to be very clear for us that at least according to Holy Scripture, at least according to God, and according to the Holy Apostle Paul, who wrote the majority of what we have as the New Testament, at least his, the school of Pauline thought produced what we call the New Testament, are very clear that homosexuality is indeed a sin. It is indeed something, let's say it like this, that practicing homosexuality is indeed a sin. And so as Orthodox Christians, as warrior saints, we have to understand that and recognize that the pressures of the world in this global society may want us to change our mind from that. And we may say, and I've heard, well, you know, I know this, but I believe. And if we say that and or find ourselves at odds with what the church teaches, then we become very much like that first group that St. Paul was talking to who they didn't want and submit to the righteousness of God, they were producing their own righteousness. And as we heard in 1 Corinthians, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's pretty tough, but it's also very clear. It says to us, look, God has a position on homosexuality. God has a statement, a teaching, a thought, an idea. And he has said it is a temptation, a passion that can lead to sin. So now, as Orthodox Christians, as warrior saints... Many of you are looking at me wondering, well, where do you go from there? How do we deal with that? How do we deal with homosexuality? How do we, as warrior saints, when confronting this issue with people we know, perhaps even one of our children maybe has said, I'm coming out as homosexual. Perhaps we, we know somebody who is living homo uh, a life of homosexuality that is getting married and invites us to their wedding, and that there's a challenge that we face. Do we go and support this, or do we not go and offend? How do we respond in anger, in love, allowing to say that this is okay or putting our foot down and saying, maybe this isn't right? How do we, as warrior saints, respond to the passion and the sin of homosexuality? That leads us to today's practical point on the way of the warrior saint. The first thing that we must keep in mind, the first thing that we must keep in mind is that we must begin to talk People. You see, one of the things that this whole global society is trying to do is to put us all in boxes. They call us things. You're black, you're white, you're male, you're female, you're straight, you're gay, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, and you become a thing. Instead of saying, perhaps, Steve is struggling with homosexuality. You see, it's really easy to attack a thing. It's easy to attack a homosexual but it's hard to attack 
Steve. And so let us begin to start talking up to people. You'll notice, if you paid attention, and I hope I'm right, but throughout the majority of this sermon thus far, I have actually shied away from the word homosexual. And we've used the word homosexuality. Because homosexuality is a sin, it is a temptation. But we're talking to Steve. And just like perhaps, I don't know, John may struggle with the sin of heterosexuality, Steve may be suffering or struggling with the sin of homosexuality. Do you follow that? Let us not put people in boxes and remember that these people are exactly that. They are people. They are children of God, created by God, just like those, like all of us, like all people. They are God's children. And so let us, number one, let's begin by talking to people and get this mentality of, uh, you know, isms out of our minds and out of our heads. Right? So that we don't put people in boxes, calling them and labeling them things. Remember, the destruction of that is that it's really easy to attack a thing. But when a person is involved, it becomes much more difficult to attack. Number one. The second part of that. How do we deal with the sin of homosexuality? And I think it is that we must be very bold and unafraid to speak and to say the difficult things. To say those things that are hard to the world in conversations and to people whom we interact with, the Steves of the world, those people whom we, we love. You see, it is a, it's a challenging thing to say to someone, man, what are you doing? You're on the wrong path. You're, leading, you're falling down into this temptation. Come back, right? It's a hard thing to say that to someone because our tendency is we don't want conflict and we don't want strife. So what do we tend to do? We tend to say, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. But is that really love? Do we really love someone when we do that? I mean, if we love our child and we see the child walking to the edge of a cliff to fall down, do we say, oh, don't worry about it, it's okay for you? Of course not. We speak up and say, come back from the edge. I love you, my daughter. I love you, my son. Come back from the edge. We don't want to let them fall over the cliff. Why would we do anything different for something, for someone that we love? And so say the difficult things. Look, very often people, you know, it's, it's a... It's a, a defense that we hear. People on one side who are pro-homosexuality, they say, well, Jesus hung out with the sinners, right? They tell us that. You know, like as if to say that somehow Christ being, in, and if you read the Bible, the Gospels, Jesus was with the sinners all the time. And their statement is to say that, we'll see, he was justifying it. I, I don't know. That's, that's not what I see in the Bible. Jesus was spent time with the sinners in order to call them back to repentance. He loved them. He wanted them to find fulfillment, fullness, salvation, and he called them to repent and come back. You see that. Jesus himself says in the Gospel of Luke, he says, I didn't come to call the righteous. I came for the sinners to lead them to repentance. And so our interactions with people of any type is to say to them, we must follow the teachings of the Gospel of Christ and come back. And that leads to point number three. And that is that each and every one of us must be a witness. We have to be a witness. You see, we heard last week in the gospel uh, from Matthew chapter 5. You are to be a light to the world. You are a light to the world. And as we remember, light shows us how to walk. Light shows us where to go. It helps us navigate in the dark. And Christ has called all of us to be light to the world. So that when people see Orthodox Christians, warrior saints from St. George, they say, that's how I want to be. That's the way to live. That is the Christ-like life. And so we must be witnesses. That means we can't be saying X and doing not X, right? It means that we can't say, well, somehow because I'm heterosexual, but I'm living a profligate life, that I'm free, I'm a little farther ahead than Steve, who may be struggling with homosexuality. I don't know, man. That's not what that list said, right? When we go back to the list that St. Paul gave us in 1 Corinthians 6, he said both heterosexuality and homosexuality, when submitted to and acted upon, will keep one from the kingdom of God. It's not that somehow I'm better or farther along. It's that the struggle is for all of us, whatever it may be. Now let's talk about that just for one brief moment. St. Dorotheos of Gaza, he says to us, in his homily on renunciation, his teaching on renunciation, he says, look, passions or temptations and sins 
are two very different things. Two very different things. A passion of sin is a temptation. It's a struggle. It's something that comes to you to test you. Anger, gluttony, homosexuality, heterosexuality. Those are temptation passions. Sin is when we allow that passion to influence, influence us into action. You see that? To be tempted by the devil is not necessarily a sin. It is the action upon it that becomes sin. And so what God is telling us, and what we're saying in this third point about being witnesses, being a light to the world, is recognize every single person in this world, you and I, every heterosexual, every homosexual, everyone in the world has sin and temptation. And whether someone is struggling with homosexuality or someone is struggling with heterosexuality, let us fight. Let us be witnesses by saying, look, I get it. I'm not the bloke. Nobody's perfect, and I'm the least. I understand that. But it is that we are engaged in the fight to try each and every day and each and every moment of our lives to live as warrior saints, to follow the teachings of Christ. And so don't allow someone to say, like, look, it's, it's look at it like this. It's not fair for us to say that homosexuality is a sin if we're living a total hedonistic life, even though we're heterosexual. Like, it's like this. If I teach you that cigarette smoking is bad for your health, but I stand up before you and I have a cigarette dangling out of my mouth, I mean, what are we talking about, right? I mean, you're going to look at me and say, loser, <laughs> right? Like, he couldn't even do what he's trying to teach us to do. My words would not be wrong. Indeed, cigarette smoking is bad for your health. But how much more powerful, how much more effective will our message, will our witness be if we are engaged in the fight? If we are struggling to live the way that God has asked us to live? Nobody's going to do it perfectly. Nobody will. But at least we can say we're engaged in the fight. And I end it with this. If our brothers or sisters who are struggling with the sin and temptation of homosexuality are also engaged in the fight, may God bless them. The key, beloved, is to find those passions and to fight against them, not allowing them to become actions and deeds in our lives. I promise you this, that God's love and God's mercy is bigger than any sin, whether homosexuality or heterosexuality. God's love and mercy and forgiveness is for any man or any woman who desires to leave behind sin and to unite him or herself to God. And so let us be witnesses engaged in the fight, the struggle against the passions, so that we might show others what it means to be engaged in that fight, and also we might draw each and every day one step closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tough conversation. I know it. I know it's hard because I know what's out there. But I know that you have within you, each and every one of you, the strength. And I know you have the desire to live Christ-like lives. So let us remember those three practical points. Find people, not isms, and not things, and not boxes. To have difficult conversations. To, to be willing in great love to say those things that are difficult to say. And lastly, to be a witness, to be a light unto the world, so that when people see you, and people see the way you live, and the way you are struggling, they say, that's how it ought to be. May our great God and Savior Jesus Christ bless and keep you. Amen.